Hello and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims and every other Friday I bring you a short episode with the top diabetes stories and headlines happening now. In the News is brought to you by Edge Park. Simplify your diabetes journey with Edge Park. Our top story this week, do men and women have different insulin requirements? A new study conducted across Europe says yes, women overall need less. Published in the Journal of Diabetes Science and Technology, this study looked at over 9,000 adults with type 1 diabetes using data from people using the Diaboloop hybrid closed loop system. In this study, women needed 14% less insulin overall than men. The researchers say this has important implications for practical management of insulin therapy. Right now, the treatment guidelines provided by both American and European diabetes societies do not have gender-specific recommendations. The co-founder of Diaboloop says this study also highlights the capacity to discover new insights from big data analysis of real-world data. New drug therapy in those lucky diabetic mice boosted insulin-producing cells by 700% over three months, effectively reversing the disease. Scientists at Mount Sinai and City of Hope have been able to grow new beta cells in the body in a matter of months. This therapy involves a combination of two drugs, one of them a GLP receptor agonist, that class of drugs that includes Ozempic. The researchers tested the therapy in mouse models of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. The signs of the disease quickly reversed and stayed that way about a month after stopping the treatment. These are animal studies, of course, so there's a long way to go here. One of the drugs has undergone a phase 1 clinical trial to test its safety and tolerability, and more trials are planned in humans next year. Stem cell-derived beta cell replacement therapy continues to show benefit in people with type 1 diabetes. Vertex says that of a total of 17 patients, three have achieved the elimination of severe hypoglycemic episodes with an A1C less than 7 at one year, and they no longer need insulin. The company provided more details about the deaths of two study participants. We talked about that earlier this year, and they say the deaths were not related to the stem cell products. And in fact, they say there have been no severe adverse events related to the product itself. For now, people selected to be in these studies are those who experience frequent severe low blood sugar deemed to be a greater risk to the patient than that of the immunosuppression that goes along with this kind of infusion procedure. Still lots of COVID research coming in about type 1. A German study suggesting COVID-19 may speed up progression of existing but pre-symptomatic T1D in kids. And these researchers had been screening and following children in an early pre-symptomatic stage of type 1 for several years before the pandemic. They noticed an increase in the incidence of clinical type 1 nearly doubled after the pandemic started. There are theories as to why the virus can infect the pancreatic islets, causing damage or changes in the beta cells, generalized inflammation during the infection, a stimulation of the immune response, and there could be metabolic stress from the infection. They're really not sure about all of that, so that research is ongoing. They're also looking into whether vaccination against COVID-19 may protect pre-symptomatic type 1 kids. They're doing a clinical trial of children with genetic risk factors for the condition in Germany right now. The FDA says no, for now, to Novo Nordisk's weekly insulin. And this has been approved in Canada and should be available there shortly. It is called a weekly. We told you about it recently. But the FDA says it wants more information related to the manufacturing process and the T1D indication to complete the review. Novo says it does not expect to be able to fulfill that request this year and that it will work closely with the FDA. So we're not closing the door on this completely in the U.S. The FDA is following its panel's vote against the use of weekly insulin Icodec. We brought you that story recently because of the risk of low blood sugar that seems to go along with it. A couple of weeks ago, we spoke to the attorneys taking on CGM monitoring in schools. They have helped a family in Connecticut now and set a precedent. A child with autism and diabetes was not getting reasonable accommodations under the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act in a public preschool program. I'm going to link up the press release from the Department of Justice, but this family wasn't getting support. It wasn't safe. The lawyers here tell me this ruling and settlement is going to help them go forward as they try to make schools compliant with CGM as a reasonable accommodation, which the DOJ has said it is. 
Ozempic could lower the risk of dementia and a range of other mental problems compared with other existing treatments for patients with diabetes. And researchers found Ozempic cut nicotine dependence in those patients. And this was a study looking at medical records from more than 100,000 U.S. diabetes patients, including more than 20,000 who were prescribed semaglutide between December of 2017 and May of 2021. After a year, patients who took Ozempic had almost 50% lower risk of developing dementia than those on another drug, Genuvia. It was 9% lower than those on Jardiance. Previous research has showed that diabetes patients are at a greater risk of developing dementia. This is an observational study, so they are now looking to replicate it in a controlled trial. Right back to the news in just a minute. But first, Diabetes Connections in the News is brought to you by Edge Park. Life is busy. Managing diabetes is a daily commitment. Edge Park can help you say goodbye to the worry of managing your diabetes supplies with a variety of cutting-edge insulin delivery systems from brands like Medtronic and Tandem. Plus, Edge Park accepts most insurance plans and handles the paperwork. So you can simplify your life, your diabetes care, and your budget in one click. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Edge Park logo to learn more. Back to the news now, and I've been getting a lot of questions about Omnipod 5 with Dexcom G7 integration. Quick update for you. It is now available through select pharmacies. Full availability expected this fall. Now, the new pods are going to be compatible with both G6 and G7. The prescription code will stay the same as the current Omnipod 5 pods. So that means you're going to have similar insurance coverage and access. If you are using Omnipod 5 right now, you're going to get new pods compatible with Dexcom G6 and G7 through your regular pod refills. No new prescription is needed. At the end of July, you will receive a free software update for the Omnipod 5 app to your controller or compatible Android smartphone. I will link up more information from Omnipod on this. And when the update comes out, it'll probably be one of our top stories. So stay tuned. Big promises about long-term implantable blood glucose monitoring from a company called Focus. They say they're partnering with GlucoTrack to, quote, transform how people with diabetes interact with their condition. They're not calling this a CGM, rather it's a CBGM, continuous blood glucose monitor, because it will measure glucose levels in blood, not in interstitial fluid like CGMs do. The company says this is a fully subdermal location with no external wearable. In preclinical studies, the CBGM has a MART of 4.7 at day 90. That is much lower than CGMs currently on the market. Dexcom and Libre are in the low eights right now, but this hasn't been fully tested in people yet. Human clinical trials are set to start later this year. No details on how the information is going to get from the fully subdermal location to an external device like a receiver or a phone. Long way to go. So for right now, firmly in the I'll believe it when I see it category, but also really hopeful. Very interesting stuff. And finally, big congrats to Jaime Ferrer. He's heading to Major League Baseball. He was drafted during day two of the MLB draft. He's going to the Minnesota Twins. The club says they have had their eyes on Ferrer since high school. I just saw him at Friends for Life in Orlando. He was at the Tandem event. He's a Tandem ambassador. Super busy with all the kids that wanted to meet him. Many of you have seen his story or even know the family. His mother has been very involved with Beyond Type 1. And I know a lot of you have followed him since he was, a, you know, I was going to say a young man, but a younger man. <laughs> He's still a very young man. So congratulations to the family. I'm going to reach out and try to get them on the podcast soon. I love it. Congratulations again. All right, that's it for In the News. Join us again next week for Diabetes Connections and Diabetes Connections Type 2. I am Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here soon. Until then, be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.